Howdy folks, we're back with more Railroader. Today we're going to be uh, doing some passenger service and some logs. So first order of business, we want to get some logs and we start with four skeleton cars like I showed in the last video. Uh, but I think I want to do as, as many logs as we can. So let's take a look at the purchase menu. So let me get my UI turned back on. So shift T. We'll bring up your purchase menu and how much are these? 40 foot skeleton cars. So they are 680. So I could get two more. Do I want to take out a loan? No, I don't, I don't think I will get, I thought about getting more cars, but I don't think I will. I think we'll make two trips. I don't want to get into uh, loans just yet. I want to kind of keep, keep fluid. <laughs> So let's get our engine on the move here. I'm gonna have my AI engineer do that. And I've got to switch his line so he'll drive up to the, where the log cars are. While he's doing that, let's talk about crew here for a second. So you can see if I hover over that, it says FRR3, the only crew. What does that mean? Well, that means I'm in a crew called the only crew and we're assigned to this locomotive. What that lets you do, at least in single player, is have a switch list. So in multiplayer, it just lets you, you know, keep track of who's doing what. So if we go over here to crews, see I made one called the only crew. You can name it whatever you want. And I'm the only member in it and I can leave it and I can join it. And then if I come here to this loco and I go to operations, you can see it's set. You can even just have it no crew, or we can switch over to the only crew. Now, if I hit T for my switch list, remember in the first video, I had that uh, coal car that we took over to the interchange. So that's done. It's crossed off. So I can just go click, and that is gone. So we're going to put our log cars on the switch list. Let me switch him over to yard mode and say, and eh, just... 20 cars, and then he's going to detect. He'll come up and couple onto these. While he's doing that, I'm going to go select this log car, go to operations. We just need to set up a waybill so this car knows what it's doing and the sawmill knows it's supposed to accept the logs. So, automatic waybill, we say the loads, the only place I can go right now is the Whittier sawmill, track R1. And then we can pick where we want them to go or where the logs come from. And I'm going to pick Connolly Creek L2 just because I know that's a good place uh, to set and gather up all the logs. And we can get a total of eight cars in there, which is nice. So now we have this car. We can say on switch list. And we've got the waybill set up. I can say copy to coupled. And then every car that's coupled to the strain will get those settings. Copied to three others. There we go. So now all these cars are set up that way. You do have to put them individually on the switch list, though. I don't know if that's an oversight or if that's a feature. Now if I bring up my switch list, we got all four flat cars on there. It says flat. It's really a log car, but that's okay. And it tells you uh, the number, where they're at, and where they're supposed to go. So let's head off to Connolly Creek L2. And I'll go to try to find my voice. I think I'm about to lose it. So if I had a second engine, this was not repaired yet. I could be doing other things. Well, he went off to the sawmill. So I'm going to throw a fusey there. I'm going to show you basically how I automate the, uh, the getting and dropping off of logs. It's not 100% automated, but it's pretty close. I let the AI help me out on that. So he's going to come on back, and we need to set up a couple more switches. So this one is good. And then this Y here goes up to Connolly branch. So I just need to throw that. And 
and you can see Connolly Creek. We need to throw this one. And then it's quite a ways up there, so I'm going to use the map. We need to go all the way up to here. Sometimes it gets a little chunky when you load in a new area. It's early access. Stuff's going to happen. So we need that switched, and then that one goes into there. Perfect. So this is where we're going to pick up the logs. You can see he stopped for the fusee. So let's go back to car. We hit follow. Jump back to that car. Okay, perfect. So he stopped for that fusee. That's going to give me enough room when I come back with logs to stop, and then I can go right into here. So now I just want to tell him to go forward and... 30s plenty. So you see on the map, there's these numbers here, like 25. That's a track speed limit. And the AI engineers will follow that. So the Connolly branch is pretty much all 25. So how are we doing on coal? Yeah, we're good for now. We're definitely going to need to be topped off soon. And of course, we need coal for the number two which we rescued so tomorrow number two should be getting probably at least half repaired and we'll have some coal to fill up the bunker so that'll be good so i'm gonna let the ai run that up there and get some logs and uh we'll pick up there Here she comes. Finally made it. It's a little bit of a slow slog up through the valleys there. Uh, it's kind of steep too. Looks like we got some rain might be moving in later. The clouds are starting to form. A little bit of a, a morning haze. We'll see. Hopefully it holds off on the rain. You can see here the AI engineer is smart. He's going to come right up here and stop. Now there's no scenery here yet. That'll be added later. It's just a spur in the grass. Again, this is early access, and this is actually a pre-release build of early access. Don't know what we're going to get on release. We'll see. I'm recording this uh, a couple days before it pops. Here we go. He is done. And it takes, I think, about an in-game hour, hour and a half uh, to load. I think the first logs pop on pretty quick. We'll see what happens here. You gonna make a liar out of me game? <laughs> I thought they usually popped on pretty quick. But what we can do, we can bring this up. You can see the waybills have cleared now. That means they're like processing. If you hover over a waybill, it shows you the track it's assigned. So if you're uh, in an industry with quite a few tracks, you can just hover over that and see where it's supposed to go. You can also in your company tab, you go to company locations and we go to Connolly Creek. You can hover over these as well, and you can click this to transport there. So these also produce uh, pulp wood, but we don't have any cars yet for pulp wood. I think somewhere there's some paper mills on the map, but I don't know for sure where those are. So pulp wood will come into uh, play at some point. All right, it's not going to show me cars, so we'll have to wait. There we go. I just uh, skipped a little time, and they got two of the cars loaded. So you can do that again on your company menu. Just hit I for the company. Come over to settings. And the time multiplier, I think, is default 2 to 1. I put it to 1 to 1. Just because solo, I don't know if I'll have enough time to get everything done. So 
You can also set when your interchange is served. I've got it at the default at six o'clock. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and wait another hour. And there we go. We have logs. So I believe we're setting on a little bit of a gray. Let's find out. So if I just ease the brakes off. Oh, I never hooked up the cars. That could be a problem. <laughs> what a derpy engineer. All right, well, let's let's cover that part. Let me just let's do this in first person. Sometimes it's a little easier. So yeah, let's connect this up. So you can click to uh, connect glad hands. Uh, thanks to a viewer in one of my videos, if you shift click, it will also set the angle cox appropriately. I don't think that's documented anywhere yet in game. It may eventually be there. But yeah, we want to make sure these are all laced up. I don't hear any air blowing out the end, so we should be good. Yep. Okay, now we actually have brakes. That would be very important on the grade out of here. Very, very important. So I'm glad I noticed the HUD. The, uh, the train HUD's a little small, but it does give you a ton of info about brakes and ankle cocks and hand brakes being on, that kind of thing. It's all right there in, the, in color on the, on the train HUD. So this is just gravity right now. We're already doing like 10 miles an hour. So it can be a pretty wild ride. Uh, I ended up derailing a skeleton car when I was first testing this game out. <laughs> Derailments are a thing. They do come off. It can make some dust and effects and it damages the car. And then that costs you money to fix. So we're just going to get about, about 14, 13 pounds on. I don't want to get too carried away coming down the hill here. Some nice clack, clack, clack as we go over the rail joints. It's holding us at about 17, so let's then release that. Let's set about 10 pounds. There we go. Actually, uh, release the loco brakes. I want to keep it to about 25. I th is there a 20 on here? I think it's 25 for the whole route. Still picking up a little bit of speed. So I like the logs. The logs have some really good detail. Some good looking logs. We get a nice F12 here. Right before we come off the tracks. Yeah, we're getting we're getting close to the limit. Let's go ahead and put some more air on. No dynamic brakes back in the day. I don't, know if we, I don't think we have retainers or anything. And the handbrakes, at least right now, are just on off. Of course, the train brakes are whatever you set them to. Let's see, where is that? Yeah, they're really sharp corners coming up, so we we need to get slowed down. Uh, this is another logging operation here for uh, logs and pulp wood. You can see the tracks are a lot shorter. That's why I like the L2. You can get all your cars on there, up to eight cars. Should get some nice flange squeals when we come through these curves. And then, uh, then we'll fast forward. I don't want to make this whole video about me coming down the Connolly Creek branch. There you can hear a little bit of flange squeal. Camera gets a little jittery on the curves here. <laughs> All right, we need to get some brakes on. Brakes. Goal is to keep it about 25. Twenty-five. 
25 ish. Yeah, we need some more here, kids. Some more flange squeal coming around the corner there. All right, I'm going to let this uh, guy handle it. And I'll see you back down at the sawmill. Okay, we're back down at the sawmill. I'm going to take back over now. Drive these logs on in. So let's see, we got the uh, reverser forward. The brake's off, train brake is off. Start pushing. A nice deep chuff when it's working hard. You can really zoom in. So. <laughs> See, I got the, uh, the switch thrown there. That's probably good. We don't need a whole lot of power. But uh, we're going to go ahead and spot these up there, and then we need to go make passenger runs so we don't lose reputation. There's people waiting at the station. Uh, but this will be half of what the sawmill needs today, and I'm running one to one time, so it's you know it's only noon. We're doing okay. So uh, you do want to make sure you get everything you need done each day before you you know skip. You can sleep through the night if you want, but you can uh, you can really take a hit to your reputation if you're not careful. So make sure you have all your work done. Contracts fulfilled, passengers ran, all that good stuff. Can't quite grab the train brake. There we go. We are stopped. Uh, I don't think I can get out through here, can I? Nope. Can't quite fit. A little, a little too large. Yeah, just look at that. Some really good textures in this game. I especially like the couplers. They look so good. But anywho, we need to uh, get cut off here. So let's hop over to this side. And we'll turn that angle cock off. And we'll set this hand wheel. Pull the coupler pin. And now these, you can see they've already taken one log off of here. If we pull up the waybills, they've gone to the, a not color. <laughs> They'll be like green or yellow, depending on whether they're set out your pickups and stuff like that. So that'll be processing through the day. And if we look over here at locations sawmill, it'll say it has zero logs in storage. So I think it consumes so many. And then when it has more than it can immediately consume, it builds up in storage. I think, I think that's how it works. I'm not hundred percent sure, but you can see it did take one log. So they are doing stuff. Let's go get our passenger car. Yeah, we need to get some people delivered between towns. So I'm going to back up on out of here and I'll see you over at the passenger car. I don't want you to go on back. You're done. Stop. There we go. All right, put you back on manual. And then you can do the things from this view if you get close enough. So we'll do that. And our hose is good back there. We just need to release the handbrake. And uh, I didn't actually show it, but the, the brake shoes and things are actually animated. Let me bring up this window. If I apply the handbrake, see the brake shoes? So there's a lot of little detail in this game. I like it. Okay, we are ready to head out for passenger service. So let's get you back on road, forward. And uh, now let's do 25. Yeah, let's do 25 till we get out of the yard area at least. And then we'll get him lined up. Don't want him going into the logs. <laughs> and we don't want him taking the Connolly Creek branch. 
So like I said, as a solo player, I really enjoy the AI functions. It really lets you uh, do what you need to do. Not worry too much about the little details. If, and you can drive the train if you want to. I do a lot of that too. Let's throw a fusey about there. We come over here and look. We still have... I thought we had 30. Did someone get mad and leave? <laughs> maybe, maybe I am remembering wrong. Anyway, we have customers waiting. Someone may have got mad and went home. So I'll see when the when the train gets up here. Okay, the engineer has stopped for a fusey, so I think we're still in range. But what we need to do is we need to set up the passenger car so the passengers know where it's going. So we want to control click on that to bring up its inspection window. We're going to go over to passengers. Now we pick our destination. So we want to load passengers to go where? Well, we're at the Whittier Depot. I'm going to have to back up a little bit. We're at the Whittier Depot, so we don't want to check that. But we're heading over to Ellis Station, so we want to check that. Oh, we are we are close enough. Okay, cool. So they are they are boarding. Now, right now, at least, there's no like animations or people that you'll see, but it does it does simulate them boarding and deboarding. So it takes a little bit of time. Uh, we only had 15, I believe. We can double check the station agent office. Yep. So that is all there is. Now I know we need to stop about right here when we come back. So I'm going to throw a fusey there preemptively. And he's going to head on out. I'm going to set him to full speed so he can go whatever the track speed is. And he'll head on out over to Ella. Alrighty, we have arrived at Ella. Now on the way over here, I went ahead and set the uh, passenger coach up for Whittier. So once these people are done getting off, the people that want to go back to Whittier will start boarding up. And uh, yeah, we'll head on back. We'll make a little money with these passengers. I think it's a dollar a head. Uh, just this short run. It's only like two miles. Yeah, so a, bu a dollar a head. But uh, if we look at the station agent window, we don't have any waybills right now, but once we bring cars over here tomorrow, uh, you can get an overview of what's in the area from the station agent. Kind of keep track of what's going on. But that is based on passenger service. We had uh, 12. Do we have anybody else show up? Nope, zero passengers waiting. So yeah, reverse. <laughs> So basically this first passenger run, I pretty much just automate it. Just let it run back and forth. All I have to do is check some boxes on the cars occasionally and switch the direction and it'll do its thing. But right now without the other loco, of course, I'm gonna have to let the passenger car sit and we need another load of logs. Once those logs are unloaded, we'll just kind of show you the route here. It's a couple miles, I think, between Whittier and Ella, maybe a mile and a half. So we got, uh, I think it's Benzel Manufacturing, and then we got Hollyfield Oil. There's nothing there yet. That's where we're dropping off the oil tanker. There'll probably be a boxcar or two for that place, maybe one for the house track. We'll just have to see what comes in on the interchange. Our job is to deliver those. And I think the stations just deliver stuff without contracts. 
they'll just show up on the interchange. And you can disable the interchange. Okay, so it actually tells you the prices here. So it's going to cost me 150 bucks to get that coal car filled up with coal. And then once we have diesel, we can get diesel fuel. $2,160 for a fuel car. Hopefully that fuel car lasts a while. 8,000 gallons. <laughs> but we're not into diesels yet. We got a long ways to go. If I bring up finance, we've made a grand total of $15 here so far in episode two. But uh, that'll be it for now. Got a lot of editing to do on this one. But that, that's the basics. That's how we're going to get started. We're going to deliver logs. We're going to run passengers. And then uh, just start building up our money. Um, I don't think anything too else exciting is going to happen here on day one. We're at the end of the afternoon to day one. Uh, the real work starts tomorrow after the interchange traffic shows up. So next episode will probably be, the, be day two. And we'll dive into all that work. So thanks as always for watching, folks. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Take care.